grande do que You're not videoing, are you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Having fun? So it's a raw food, yeah, you've yeah. activated the cashew nuts, which takes away the, um, the enzyme inhibitors, which is really bad for your gut. Yeah. And then if you want to heat it up, then you can just stick it, um, on, you know, in a pan and warm it up a little bit. Or cook it to death if you want. That's fantastic, yeah. Or wrap it in a tortilla and, like, put it on a panini, so then you've got, like, a, a hot mushroom. Hot mushroom. That's a bit I could never understand. Oh, yeah. We are working, did. Just doing it for some reason. We're working. So, yeah, here. No bother, you're in. Just scoop it. Oh, it's ready. Come on, it's chat. I'm walk around like this. I'm sorry, Cool. <laughs> 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 
Shall we start a talk? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Oh, easy. Uh, I'm going to introduce Clive DeCarl. As I said, he's a, a, a friend of ours, I'd consider him. He's uh, one of the most knowledgeable guys on this alternative health that we're all looking at now. Do we trust the men in the white coats? No. You know, who's paying the men in the white coats? Mm. And Clive's been brave enough over the last few years to be um, challenging the uh, modern memes of cancer therapies and how do you cure diabetes and what do you do for old people when they're getting a bit of Alzheimer's so I'm going to introduce Clive he's got some brilliant YouTube videos so you can catch up on what he talks about today because um, you, you, sometimes there's a bit of a massive information and you can review it afterwards so he's done some brilliant talks with <coughs> Luke Collins on the uh, UK column and there's also a massive amount of YouTube uh, Presentation. So let's say welcome, Clive, and uh, thanks very much. Woo! Uh, can you hear me without this, or shall I use the microphone? <coughs> well, great. Um, I'd like to start off by dispelling some of the medical myths because you know one of the big problems that I see all the time is people who are eminently sensible, clever, uh, should know better go to the doctors because they've got what they think is a disease. Introduce Ollie after all of the technical persuasions. Uh, we're going to also have a bit of music afterwards so it'll be like half hour break so we've got time afterwards so we'll just add this onto the talk so okay. good luck son, carry on. Thank you. Let's Hello, say welcome. <laughs> Hello. Um, it's my first time doing this publicly so uh, just please just bear with me in case you get any ums, ahs and stutters. Um, okay, so I'd like to talk to you about uh, indigenous healing techniques from the Amazon today. Um, a little bit about uh, what I was trying to think about what, what I was going to kind of do for this talk. Um, initially, it was kind of working with, I was thinking about talking about plant spirits and the, and the mechanisms in which plants can heal us. And then I thought um, it's better rather to talk about the kind of fireworks and all the kind of amazing, beautiful things that you see when you drink plant medicine. I thought it would be more. Um, beneficial for everyone to talk about the mechanisms in which um, ayahuasca has a profound ability to heal people. So, as I was saying, you're definitely in the right place this afternoon because um, crop circles are an idea that have captured the popular imagination and Rob has spent many years looking into the subject and talking to the people who are closest to the heart of it. So we're in for a, um, a rare combination of inside information on crop circles and genuine dying breed of investigative journalism Rob Buckle, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So let's introduce them. It's going to be a first talk, so let's give her a, a chance to uh, uh, get the stuff out, and also uh, Ollie and a few of the other guys will help out as well on the course. So uh, let's welcome Steph. Thank you. Um, thank you. 
thank you everybody um, for venturing out in the rain to join me uh, to share this talk with all of you. Um, I'd really like to change um, the, the, the structure of this talk and, and invite it to be more of like an open dialogue and a debate because essentially the plight of the bee is a topic that concerns all of us um, and it's something that's very dear to my heart. Um, and I've had multiple experiences that have really deepened my connection with bees. But essentially, bees matter to all of us. And so if anyone has anything to add to the discussion, um, really be welcomed. And it also helps to build the energy as well. So if anyone has any questions or comments, um, they'll be really greatly received. Hello. Hello. My name is Stephen Hall. I'm going to talk about the law of attraction. Before I do that, I want to say a massive thank you for Dig. Uh, and all the guys that have put this together, because bringing like-minded people together that's a tremendous amount of energy. Now I am gonna take advantage of that energy and we're gonna do some guided meditations a little bit later so that you can start to manifest some things. The law of attraction is the idea that we are the creators of our reality. So things that appear to be external from us, we are somehow making those things happen. Now, not many people are doing this consciously. This is something that happens at a subconscious level. It appears that it's happening to us, but we can't stop it. So what I'm going to talk about over the next hour is how to take this process from something that is subconscious and it appears to happen to us, something that is very conscious and very deliberate, so that we can decide what we want, what we want to be, what we want to do and what we want to have, and then we can focus on that and we can manifest that in our lives. And Jess is going to give us a, a quick summary of all of our flower remedies and then speak to us a little bit about how to make your own remedies, including producing a resilience remedy from these beautiful little campanula flowers down here, which have been sitting soaking up the atmosphere of the whole game. So um, I'll get out of the way. I've had plenty of time studying up here this weekend. And uh, round of applause for Jess and the dark flower remedy. Well, thank you all for coming out at this early hour. Um, it's really lovely to see you all here. It's brilliant. I just made it myself. <laughs> so this is the first talk I've ever given on the Bachlauer Remedies. I've never really given a, 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 a presentation on them before. Although I've been familiar with these remedies now since 1988. Um, somebody I met in Sandrine Dodd Wells in Mid Wales in one day introduced me to three things that became really central to my life. One of them was colour therapy, one of them was the Bach flower remedies and the other thing was the I Ching. <laughs> Oh, no. 
teacher and friends. <laughs> and shooting stars. Shooting stars. How you blazed across the sky. I wish I was special. We're all special. We're all so special. We're all creeps. We're all widows. What the hell we're doing here? When it's pissed down all day. Don't care for much. We'll have control. I want the body. I want the fix I want you to know. I was special. Oh, You're so special. I'm a
Connecting with the ground, with Mother Earth, um, you feel it as you sing it. So it's, it's simply, Mother, I feel you under my feet. Mother, I hear your heartbeat. And then, as we connect with Father Sky, Father Sun, Father, I see you where the eagle flies. Flight of the spirit's going to take us higher. Mother, I feel you under my feet. Mother, I hear your heart beat. Mother, I feel you under my feet. Mother, I our gratitude this, this, for this kind of gratitude. There's many different things you can do with that for how I agree, but this one's a gratitude one. And it's yeah, expressing it so the universe sort of knows this, this is what we like, you know, this is what we appreciate. It's saying thank you, it's giving that aini, giving something back. Um, and all we always do is simply take pieces of um, items from nature, materials, and we blow with it our intention, our gratitude, our wishes and uh, blow it in and we're going to yeah. place it on the, on the cloth. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you now. Yeah. 
So I'm going to start off with a kintu. A kintu is a set of three leaves. Traditionally it's coca leaves. Sometimes it's bay leaves. I just use whichever leaves I feel. Um, usually it's three representing our inner world, our middle world where we are now, and our super conscious or upper world. Past, present, future it can be. Um, but these inner world, middle world, and they used to have it like this. But now I hear they're bringing them together. The inner world, the middle world, and the upper world all combining. Our, our subconscious, our conscious, our higher conscious combining, becoming one. So I think that's what I feel to do today. And I'm just going to blow in the intention for this Haiwarakui, which is it's a gratitude to give our hands. So it's informing it with a breath. It's a bit like when you blow a kiss to somebody and you're sending your love and you feel it, don't you? It's, it's like that, but it's... Not necessarily just love, it's like other, other specifics of gratitude. Often I, I um, follow kind of basic groundwork, like a basic framework. Things like, you know, maybe do stuff from the inner world, uh, our consciousness and our upper world, or I might do things relation to the earth and so on, but I don't feel to do that this time. I invite you just to, to make your own framework. Bring in whatever you feel gratitude for in the moment and bring it in. and. Yeah, the boundaries, it feels, the veils are just coming thinner, so I don't, I don't feel like I need to do that today. So I invite you just to come in, just come as, as you feel, not like, not as you feel something to be gratitude for, blow it in. You can share it out loud if you like, or you can share it quietly. It's really nice to do it out loud, because then, then you can be hearing it going, yeah. festival I know how much hard work it is and it's I yeah it just amazes me how much you've done all the volunteers have just worked and worked and missed so much of the festival because they've been working so hard in the kitchen or behind the scenes I just really want to give my gratitude to that I just I uh, hope they feel they you know they know how appreciated it is I'm gonna throw that in. Uh -huh. Good to share out loud sometimes because you're like, yes, I, I agree. Hi everyone. Uh, I've got oh. gratitude for all of you for coming and uh, helping to make this the very first Conscious Tribal Gathering fantastic. I believe success. I hope you do too. Yeah. A little bit of peace from heaven on earth. Really specific. There's loads, so many things to be grateful for that I'd like. I'd like to express my gratitude for um, in for, for the information, for the inspiration. And for all the Thanks so much. Everybody knows how I feel. I'm so grateful. I feel so blessed. I am. Um, I know now why I came here. I had to come here. It was like something was bigger than me was saying you're going to be here. And I just want to say thank you to everybody. The first thing I received when I came on the field was a great big hug. <laughs> the second thing I re uh, received was another great big hug. That went on. And now I could have been hugging all night, but I got five <laughs> beautiful hugs. Came in through, and I, I just want to say thank you, not only to the organisers, but thank you to the people that just trusted and came. Yeah? And so thank you. I've had a brilliant time. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, just really grateful for um, all the love and open heart. 
So we're going to let go now. We set our intention, set our gratitude, but we also got to let this go as well. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, mate. Oh, he looks like the little thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good clone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, do you know not to the whole thing in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did a salad. Woo! Yeah. Yeah.